Combined Science Trilogy Foundation. Figure 1 shows an animal cell. What is structure A? Structure A, this one running outside, is the cell membrane. Structure B is the nucleus. Okay, 1.3. Figure 2 shows a sperm cell. Describe how a sperm cell is adapted to carry out its function. So you've got two things you could say here. It has a tail to help it swim to the egg. Okay, or you could talk about how it has many mitochondria in this little section here to release energy to swim. Substances can move into and out of cells by three processes. The diagram shows the concentration of different substances inside and outside a root hair cell. How would each substance move into the root hair cell? Draw one line from each root hair cell to the correct process. So here, girls, what we have to look at is the fact that they're telling us it's talking about water here, it's talking about nitrate here, it's talking about magnesium, here, okay, and you'll see immediately that I've scribbled all over the diagrams, okay, there's a high concentration, there's lots of dots of water molecules outside here, we know anyway that water only moves by osmosis, so we could have probably guessed osmosis there, but we know that water also moves from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water by osmosis. So here again, what I've done is I've looked for where my high and low concentration are. So here to go into the cell, it's going from high to low. Substances, not water, move from a high to a low concentration by diffusion. And then at the end here, we've got a low concentration, not very many of the dots on the outside moving to a high concentration against the concentration gradient that must be active transport so girls just to remind you that if at any point you need to make it clear that you're scribbling anything out you've got to make it incredibly clear okay so if you put a wrong answer you're not going to have a pencil you're just going to scribble out um, across the line like that Okay, so here you've got a uh, scale drawing of one type of cell in the blood. Okay, and it says use the scale to determine the width of the cell. So our scale is each block that's this size, that's what that bar means, is the same as two micrometers. Okay. So all you have to do is to work out how many blocks that size fit into the width of the cell. So you can see with my pen, again, I've gone one, two, three, four. There are four of these bars across the width of the cell. So each small box equals two micrometers. There are four of them. So each one equals two, so that's four times two or two times four okay and that gives you a width of eight micrometers question three so here respiration can happen aerobically or anaerobically draw one line from each type of respiration in human cells to the correct information so nowhere in human cells do we produce ethanol. That's why I've crossed that one out. I know that that one's going to be wrong. I know that aerobic respiration uses oxygen, or at least you should do by now. Neither of them use carbon dioxide, so I can discount that option. Anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid. Well, yes, we know that because uh, that's what makes our legs feel tired when we're doing high intensity ex exercise or any of our muscles feel tired. <coughs> 
3.2. The table shows the amount of energy released by aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Suggest why human cells might risk fire anaerobically, even though only a small amount of energy is transferred. So what it's saying is, why do we even use this process if we get so much and en less energy from it? Okay, now here's the idea, girls. When we're sprinting, our heart cannot get the blood to our cells quickly enough, which means the cells cannot get the oxygen quickly enough. Okay, so think about that. We're working hard, our cells still need energy, but there isn't enough oxygen because it's limited by how fast it can get there, okay? So what we actually have is a situation where there's not enough oxygen available for aer aerobic respiration, but we still need that energy, so that's why we turn to this process even though it makes entirely less. Okay, so uh, we're on to, I'm going back a bit now, sorry girls, question 2.2. Okay, so we've got complete table one, carries oxygen around the body, red blood cells, protects the body against infection, white blood cells, the plasma, that's that yellow stuff that we looked at, transports a whole named heap of, uh, named of substances. So you could talk about substances dissolved from food. So you could talk about things like glucose, amino acids. You couldn't talk about big things, but those things were suitable. Uh, urea, hormones, and uh, the only big thing you could talk about actually is proteins. So platelets are fragments of cells. Platelets help the blood to clot. Suggest what might happen if your blood did not clot. You would lose a lot of blood. Um, if you have a cut, it needs to be able to clot, doesn't it? Um, because otherwise you wouldn't get that plug on the top that would stop the blood coming out. Also, you could talk about the idea that uh, bacteria could get into the blood here. 